Okay, now let's talk about the geometric picture. So we're starting with a curve. Y is equal to f of x. So it's a curve given by a function in the xy plane. And we have some point on the curve. We can specify it just by an x coordinate, which we're going to call x1. Then its y coordinate is the value of the function at x1, f of x1. So that's the point we're looking at. Now the tangent line is the line that just comes and touches the curve just once at that point and doesn't really go through it just hits that point and then keeps going, it looks like the curve at that point. We'd like to get the slope of the tangent line because that's what we are defining to be the slope of the curve. The slope of the curve is the slope of the tangent line, this green line right here. Well, how do we get a slope of a line? We need two points. The tangent line is defined by going through a single point. That's a problem. So we need to, in order to get a slope, come up with a second point. But that means we're going to be looking at some other line. Well, this line that we're going to use to estimate the slope of the tangent line is called the secant line. We take another point on the curve, we take some value x2, and its y coordinate uh, will be f of x2, and we draw the line between x1 and x2, this blue line. That's our secant, secant line, and it estimates the tangent line. It's clearly not the same thing, but its slope is close to it. Okay. So then we can get the slope of the tangent. The slope of the tangent line is estimated by the slope of the secant line, which is f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. The difference in y coordinates over difference in x. Great. Now we can get better and better estimates of the tangent line by letting this extra point, x2, get closer and closer to x1. So what I'm trying to suggest here is something like this. If I could take a slightly better value for x2, get a slightly better secant line, now I can take a better value for x2 and get a, an even better secant line, etc. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's estimate the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f of x is equal to x squared at the point 1 comma 1. So this parabola right here is the standard parabola, y is equal to x squared, and the point we're interested in is 1 comma 1. This green line right here is the tangent line, and we'll be estimating its slope by using secant lines. The secant lines will go through 1, 1, and x comma x squared, where x is some other x value that's getting closer and closer to 1. And we get the slope of the secant by taking f of x minus f of 1 over x minus 1, which is x squared minus 1 squared over x minus 1. Okay, so... Up until now, I've basically been coming from the right. So let's start off over there. I've been saying let's take points from the right and come closer to the point that we're interested in looking at. So the x values I've taken here are 2, 1.1, 1.01, and 1.001. Those are points coming from the right, getting closer and closer to 1. When I put these values into this equation right here for the slope of the secant line, I get 3, then 2.1, then 2.01, then 2.001. It looks like it's approaching value. It looks like it's getting closer to 2. However, we really need to, mathematically, geometrically, whatever, consider the secant lines sort of, in a sense, coming from the left. I also need to allow for the possibility that I'm taking points to the left and looking at secant lines coming from that direction, too like the one that I just drew here. Okay, so taking x values coming from the left, I've got 0, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and 0 0.999, getting closer and closer to 1. The slopes of the secant lines I get here are 1, 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999. Okay, so the slopes of the secant lines look like they are going to the number 2, as the value x gets closer and closer to 1. As I let this second point on the curve get closer and closer to 1, 1, the slope of the secant line looks like it's approaching 2. So that's going to be our guess, that the slope of the tangent line should be 2. Great. Now we can actually get an equation for the tangent line, because now we have the point that the tangent line goes through, and we have its slope, which is 2. Now the most general form of uh, an equation for a line that's going to be really useful for you this semester is the point-slope formula, which says that the line that goes through x1, y1 with slope m 
as equation y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So we plug in x1 equal to 1, y1 equal to 1, and m equal to 2. That gives us y minus 1 is 2 times x minus 1. I distribute to get y minus 1 is 2x minus 2. Then I add 1 to both sides to get y is equal to 2x minus 1. So that should be the equation for our tangent line. Does that make sense? Well, this green line looks like it might have y-intercept negative 1. If, if I extended it, it looks like it's probably going to hit the y-axis at about negative 1. So it has the right y-intercept, and then if it hits the y-axis at negative 1, you can then compute that the slope is indeed 2. So it looks like, yes, this is the correct answer for the, slope, uh, the equation of the tangent line to this curve at that point. Now here's the third question for this series of lectures. Uh, would you please estimate the slope of the tangent line at the point 2 comma 4 doing the exact same thing that we just did to estimate the slope at 1 comma 1? All right, let's do another example. This time, let's estimate the slope of the tangent line to the graph of g of x is 1 over x. So this black curve here is a hyperbola. It's y is equal to 1 over x. And we're going to find the uh, slope of the tangent at 2 comma 1 half this green point right here, and I've illustrated the secant line. And, uh, excuse me, the tangent line. Now the secant line will go through 2 comma 1 half and another point on the graph, which is x comma 1 half, so that's illustrated by this blue line. And we're going to take its slope, which is given by g of x minus g of 2 over x minus 2, change in y over change in x. That gives us the formula 1 over x minus 1 half over x minus 2. And then we're going to plug in values for x that get closer and closer to 2. I've taken values from the left being 1, 1 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999. And coming from the right, I've taken 3, 2.1, 2.01, and 2.001. When I plug in these x values into this formula for the slope of the secant, I get from the left negative 0.5, negative 2.631, negative 0.2512, negative 0.2501. From the right, I got negative 0 0.16666666, okay. Uh, then I get negative 0 0.2380, negative 0 0.2487, and finally negative 0 0.2498. Okay, x approaches 2, and the slopes of the secants look like they go to negative 0 0.25, which is negative 1 quarter. Is this reasonable? Well, it's a negative slope. That makes sense because our green line is decreasing. And since the slope has absolute value less than 1, its absolute value is a quarter, that suggests that it's not a very steep line that corresponds to our picture 2. So that makes sense. So using the point 2 comma 1 half and the slope negative 1 quarter, we plug that into the uh, point slope form to get y minus 1 half is negative 1 quarter times x minus 2. It's my x coordinate, y coordinate, slope. Distribute to get y minus 1 half is equal to negative 1 quarter x plus 1 half. And I add 1 half to both sides to get y is equal to negative 1 quarter x plus 1. Does this seem reasonable? Well, I've taken the liberty, I already did, of uh, extending this tangent line to the left. And look, it looks like it should hit 1. So it has the right y-intercept. And if it does go through this point, then you can check that, yeah, its slope has to be negative 1 quarter. So this seems reasonable. So I'd like to end on a note. We're interested in looking at the behavior of expressions that look like this. f of x minus f of a over x minus a as x approaches a. We looked at this in the context of velocity. f could be position, and I'm looking at the change in position over the change in time. And then I'm letting that time interval go to zero. Or in the context of tangent lines, this is the, these are the coordinates of two points on a curve, this gives us the slope of a secant line change in y over change in x, and then we're letting the secant line get closer to the tangent line by letting x approach a, and that should give us the slope of the tangent line. It's the same exact idea in both cases. So this is the mathematical thing we're looking at when we're thinking about derivatives. Okay. So to study this sort of thing, I can't just plug in x equal to a, because I get f of a minus f of a over a minus a. If 
I plug in x equal to a, I get 0 over 0. That's a problem. So to study something like this, we need to introduce some new machinery, and that is the topic of the rest of Chapter 2, limits.